Hello everyone, welcome to Public Finance. This is Dr. Gevrik and today we're going to get started with this very exciting topic. We are now embarking on chapter one, why study public finance and let's get started. Okay, so this is chapter one, part one, what is public finance? So here's a quick roadmap about what we will cover in part one. In part one, we're covering what is public finance question. We're also covering why study public finance. Okay, so what is public finance? So public finance is the study of the role of government in the economy. That is it. So as a child, I used to think like whenever my parents were driving on the road, wow, you know, street lights, wow, the highway, who pays for these? Taxpayers do pay for it. So as a child, I thought government was somehow paying for it. But I didn't know the res uh, resources or the revenue sources. Okay, so proper role of government is one of our questions. What's the proper role of government in the economy? Okay, this question evokes lots of emotions from different groups of people. So, but we are going to approach to this class with objective information. Okay, so what's the proper role of government? Expenditure side is what services should the government provide, okay? So where should the government spend money? For instance, should government pay for my Taylor Swift tickets? Uh, Taylor Swift, I like her, but I'm not big of a pet fan to go to her, her concerts. Long story short, what services should the government provide? For instance, should government take care of stray dogs? Yes, local governments do that. Should government take care of the roads? Yes. Our answer uh, usually is yes, right? So let's take a look at the revenue taxation side. How should the government raise its money? Okay, so how should the government um, tax its citizens? Where will we get the money? So I always saw the expenditure side, right? You're on the road. You, you take it as granted, right? For instance, local government picks up your trash every week in, you know, in Texas they pick up our trash and I take it for granted. But if you look at some other countries, they don't have a really good organized service provided by government. So we see lots of government services. We take it for given. Uh, we don't really learn, you know, as a child, I didn't know, like, where does the revenue come from? Or hello, the tax revenue. Okay. So let's take about uh, let's take a look at this COVID nineteen response of the U.S. government. So COVID nineteen uh, is something we all experienced a couple of years ago. So when it started, we started hearing news January February and coronavirus preparedness and response supplemental appropriations act came into play. This was in March sixth of twenty twenty. And if you remember, after the spring break of 2020, I mean, I do remember, we never came back from that spring break because everything became online. So government allocated $8.3 billion to fight the spread of COVID-19 funded vaccine and testing development. So next, two days later, Families First Coronavirus Response Act 225 billion testing funds, paid sick leave, food assistance funding. Then came CARES Act. So this is March 27th. So this is, we're at the, about the start height of the COVID. $2.2 trillion. This is like 10% of our GDP. We're going to talk about that. So qualified people received $1,200 stimulus checks um, up to certain Earning levels, everybody got 1200 If you made more than that, you your um, stimulus checks went down a little bit. Also, we had enhanced unemployment benefits. They created Paycheck Protection Program, PPP loans, small business forgiveness loan programs, aid for state, local governments, and aid for corporations. So then... We targeted PPP Healthcare Enhancement Act. This is targeting more companies and also funding for COVID testing. This is April 24th. 483 more billion dollars for PPP and funding for COVID testing. 
So then to uh, Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2021, however, this passed right before, you know, 2021, this is another $920 billion. This sent $600 stimulus checks, renewed PPP, billions of uh, dollars going into vaccinations, and federal uh, government boosted unemployment benefits uh, increase per week. Okay. And uh, another one came in. This is now a new government, right? We have new administration. America Rescue, Rescue Plan. So this is March of 2021. So it's almost like one year later. This is $1.9 trillion. So another 1,400 stimulus checks for qualified people. Money for schools to reopen. And billions for vaccine distribution and development. So by this time, we had vaccines available to the people who need the most and who are in the essential work. This also extended unemployment benefits. The bill is the second largest COVID-19 package after the CARES Act. So both uh, governments, the first one was a Republican uh, president and the second one's a Democrat president. So they both uh, passed uh, packages to counteract the effects of COVID-19. So I want to show you the civilian unemployment rate. This is seasonally adjusted. What's an unemployment rate? So if you haven't taken my labor economics class, watch those videos. There we calculate unemployment rate. Unemployment rate is the number of unemployed divided by the total number of labor force, LF. Oh my gosh. That looks like uh, Freddy Krueger has written that. I don't know. It's a really old horror movie this is labor force and labor force is number of unemployed plus employed okay so this is the total unemployment rate uh, of number of people in the economy who are unemployed who are either employed or unemployed by looking for a job as a percentage of those people so this is from 2003 till 20. 23 January. I wanted to show you a couple of things, folks. So as you can see, unemployment rate historically in the US, this is called what we call full employment rate, about three to four percent. I want to say 3.5 percent. So 3.5 percent of people who are actively looking for a job are uh, unemployed at the moment. Normally, this is a steady state. So let's see what happens. Let's see what happens whenever we actually have uh, either recession or crisis like this pandemic. So if you look at this, I want to show you these gray bands. So this is when we had the 2008 Great Recession in the United States. Unemployment goes up whenever you have recession. So unemployment rate from 3%, 3 4% to... It goes all the way up to 10%. It actually surpassed 10%. So it comes, it climbs up fast. It then lags, stays on for a while. And then unemployment rate has been declining really. It was going really great. Okay, here. So January 2020, right before COVID, 3.5. February 3.5. March, this is when it starts happening. But April is when we see the effects of COVID. All the businesses closed up. So 14.7% April 2020 unemployment rate. And that's a huge spike. As you can see, there's a gray band here. It's showing economic, not a recession, but it was a mild recession, right? For it to be counted as a recession, you need to have at least two periods of GDP going down, declining GDP, okay? And this was COVID-generated, very short recession, okay? So 14.7%, 13, 11. So it just keeps, keeps sticky, right? It goes all the way down to 6, 7%, okay? So we spent all 22, rest of 2022 with super high unemployment rate. Again, why do we have such high unemployment rate? Because some businesses actually closed down too, shut down. So then 2021, we spent about 6, then 5, 4.8, about 5%. 2022, 
2022, we are back to our full normal, what I call normal unemployment rate, 3.5%. 3, 4%, 3.5%, the middle unemployment rate expected. Reason being, at any point of time, there are people who don't like their jobs, they want to switch their jobs. Uh, at any point of time, there are people in between jobs, moving to a different state or taking a break, short break. Okay, so this is why we have some unemployment rate. And we'll talk about this. This is called frictional unemployment rate. Okay, so 2023 is going at the same rate, 3.3, 3.4. Okay, so this is the gross domestic product, GDP. This is the real gross domestic product. Gross domestic product is defined as the total value of goods and services produced in a country within a period of time. So this is the COVID times. I want you to see this. This is the second quarter with COVID, okay, it was about negative 30 plus percent, and then we bounced back the next quarter. So it's it's almost like a minor recession. And right now we are experiencing positive economic growth rate. However, we had some negative growth, but it was really mild, so we didn't count as a recessionary period. So what's happening? This is a 2022 third and fourth quarter this was 2.7% and then the last quarter is 3.2%. So economy is growing about 27 to 3.2%. Okay. Is it really strong growth? It is not, but that's what's happening right now. So this is our real gross domestic product, real GDP. So this is the value of all goods and services we produce in a year in the United States. So 2017, I just want to give you the full picture. Our GDP always goes up in a upward trend. However, as you can see right here, we do have unexpected things such as uh, COVID-like pandemics or some recessions in the past. So 2017, our real GDP is $18.1 trillion. 2018, 18.68. So we want our GDP to go up. Why? We want our GDP to go up because our population is growing. So per person, uh, gross domestic product needs to go up for higher standard of living. Okay, 2019, our GDP, real GDP, 19.09. 2020, first quarter, 1901. Check this out. 2020 second quarter, 17.2 trillion. This is like we are pushed back to 2014 levels. That's scary. Uh, we ended 2020. We ended year 2020 with 18.4. So we are barely at the before COVID rates. And then 2022 fourth quarter is 20.2 trillion dollars so we bounced back uh, and we are above pre-covid levels let's take a look at cpi for all urban consumers cpi is a measure of inflation it's consumer price index okay so this is a 12 month percentage change okay so how much prices are increasing in other words we have a basket of goods and this basket of goods was measured in 82, 84. This includes lodging, uh, transportation, energy costs, food costs. It has lots of items, something that a household would use, individual would use, consumers would use. And this basket was measured 82, 84, and then kept measuring it in the next coming up years. And this measures the increase in it, okay? So this is a 12-month percentage change. We use Greek letter pi, pi for inflation, inflation. This is the increase in the price level, consumer price index. We measure inflation in terms of 12-month percent change. You can also do month-to-month -month inflation, but it makes sense to look at annual inflation. Okay, let's take a look. This starts from 2017 till 
2023. Okay, so what's the normal rate of inflation? About 2%. Okay, about 2% inflation is considered normal. Why? Because your economy is growing, right? Your GDP is growing. Your price level is also going to grow. It's okay to have about 2% inflation. So we were having that 2% or so inflation here, 2017. If you look at it, 2%, 1.9, this and that. 2018, about the same, 2%, 3%, normal. 2019, actually less than, you know, it's it was less than, the inflation numbers in 18 and 17, great. 2020 are seeing inflation actually going down here. Inflation was helping here. Housing prices were really favorable. I actually forced a couple of friends to buy a home because they, they were able to get interest uh, rates about 2% mortgage interest. Now it's 7%. That's a huge difference. My friends got a car. In the summer of 2021, before the summer, for instance, around 2%. So right here, April, right before the rates went up. Here, 2 3%. Okay. So I, for instance, purchased the car with 6% APR January of 2022. So what happened is that we were hit by, start, started getting warm April 2021. And then, as you can see, inflation has started to get really systematically high starting from summer of 2021. And we have been experiencing some inflationary environment. And it is cooling a little bit, but it's still really high. And what's the reason for inflation? It's energy costs, food costs, and we have supply chain issues due to COVID. Government stimulus checks coming in, so people had more disposable income to purchase things. So it adds to the inflation, okay? So the second question is, why study public finance? Government plays a central role in our lives, okay? Government spending represents a huge sector in an economy in the U.S., but also in the world. This spending is financed through taxes or with debt. So how does government borrow? It's through government treasury bonds, for instance, or some governments actually borrow from foreign countries too. And these affect every facet of the economy. Okay, Many sectors of the economy are directly affected by regulation. So I was visiting a oil refining company Valero last week and Valero um, they were talking about upcoming regulations and how they are actually adjusting their business to to satisfy the government's EPA regu regulations so and so forth also there is ongoing disagreement about the size of the and the role of the government while some people are like we should expand the government some people say should stay the same or some people say we should make it smaller okay so in this chapter we'll talk about facts and arguments and this is going to provide you with information on what's going on right now in the world and u.s government economy as well and also you're going to learn about uh public finance issues and how to think about these issues okay i'll see you in part two if you haven't done so please hit the like button in this video yes i do sound like your youtubers because you are the one who has power to push this video into the eyeballs into the eyes of other people who are struggling with economics or public finance looking for a video to really watch and learn more about it and ace their classes don't forget the like button hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel so that all the videos i post will pop up when i do so